Welcome to a Category 5 snowstorm. No kidding. This is literally like a Category 5 snowstorm. And you're wondering how maybe I'm going to try to get to my shop. I'm taking the road. I wanted to make this video to show you what a Cat 5 snowstorm looks like. And you know this is bad when your weather radio goes off for the first time for a snow warning. I can't take the trail because the trail has about about a six foot drift in it. Shop's got about a four foot drift here, see? And yes, I'm out of breath. Because I'm not meant to walk through deep snow. Only half inch. Anything over half inch, I get wore out. I think my door is fucking frozen. Nope. Okay. Door's heavier though because it's got the weight of the snow on it. Oh my god. They had us in for a blizzard warning. So that will turn on. And the lights probably won't do you any good anyway. But this is what the snow looks like. Blowing up against the door. And this is nothing, this here is nothing compared to what I had up at the front of the house. I, I should have had my webcam going, but I, I don't even have my computer, my old computer even on today. I haven't had it on for a couple of days. I went out to plow the driveway, at least the fucking driveway. That was... Now, it could be a hell of a lot worse than this, but I couldn't even get four feet out of my out of my garage before I got before I didn't get stuck. I just couldn't push it anymore. I literally had to ram the shit. Okay, so. When I got to the end of the driveway, I was literally out of room. I couldn't even push it any further. I couldn't even get it across the street. I had to leave it on the road because I just couldn't push it any further than that. And I'm not going to sit there and ram the fucking shit. Because it's hard on the four-wheeler. Now, this is some... It's, it's like... It's not soft, soft. It's got some moisture in it because it was... Um, it was raining here a little bit last night, and then my sister and her boyfriend or whatever went up went up to the cities, and uh, they said that when they got there, it was actually raining out. Well, I checked the radar and went down, I went down on the radar and looked at where she was going, and they were getting a mixture of rain and fucking snow. Well, by the time that bullshit got to us. It turned into like freaking mini hail, like a mini hail storm. So it didn't really stick, but it was wet. And then you got snow that came. And then now it's just blowing. Yesterday they said the winds were supposed to be 45 miles an hour. That was the gusts. <laughs> they changed it down to 55. And it's, yeah, it's got to be doing at least 55. And this isn't town yet. I don't even want to know what the outskirts of town look like. Or, you know, what the highways look like. Um, but what's funny, though, is that we've had other snowstorms like this before. And they've never named them. And my radio has never gone off. Even the CB radio went off. And then I was like, well... This, this this must be pretty serious then because they've never gone off before. We've had storms like this in the past and and 
they just simply never had that kind of a warning. And, you know, I do have my radio programmed to come on for things that we get the most around here. You know, I don't have a set for hurricanes and and nuclear fallout or whatever. You know, what all that other crap is. I just have tornado warnings, snow warnings, um, and I think there's a few other warnings too that are for, you know, around here. And stuff like that. But I don't have the hurricanes and all that shit hooked on. Because we don't get hurricanes away up here, so. But. I've had that set, you know, for a while. And it's never gone off until. Until just now. Or this morning, actually, it went off. So. But. It was looking like. There was no moving it. It it was more of a fight than than anything else. So and I knew that they were they were talking of a snowstorm. Well, they've been talking of that since fucking you know like last night or even yesterday. Well, we've had a morning for a couple of days, but they said nothing was going to hit until like yesterday afternoon, late afternoonish. Into, late into the evening. Oh, uh, it's it snowed like a little bit, you know. Like it wasn't windy. It wasn't. It wasn't snowing, you know. And then I woke up this morning. It's like a Cat Five freaking hurricane out here, you know. It's just. And we got a lot of snow in just a few hours. And it's supposed to apparently it's supposed to clear up a little bit. The sun is trying to come out. So, but I mean, it would help if it would just quit blowing, you know, then we wouldn't get all this, this snow everywhere, and I just don't even, so what ended up happening is that when, uh, for the driveway, I thought what I could, I pushed it as far as I could, I, I wasn't going to bother with it, so I, I just left it on the road, I, I fucking knew that no one was going to be out in this, and if they were, well, that's their fault then, you know, they shouldn't be out traveling, they even had a warning out. Saying don't travel unless you absolutely have to. Nothing's worth your fucking life. So. But luckily no one came. But then. I suppose about maybe 15 minutes later. The snowplow guy came. And he took a couple of whacks at the. Uh, at the pile that I left. Well, the, there was a bobcat here earlier. And he left the pile on the side of the road too. In front of my house. So I figured well I'm not going to you know try to fight. I'll fucking leave it. Fuck it, the rope plug I can deal with it. I got enough crap to deal with. So, he ends up taking a couple, he took one whack at it, coming, going into town. And I guess it must have, must have jerked him pretty hard or something, because I heard the truck go under extreme load, and I think he was even starting to drift a little bit, because I didn't get to it right away. So he took a, he took a pretty good whack at it, and then on the way back, he took another whack at it, and that pushed him right across the road, pretty much. So, but I didn't bother pushing it any further, because I'd be spending another another hour just trying to get the shit across the street. It ain't not worth my fucking time. So, the road plow guy came, he buried my, in, in my driveway again. And I'm not going to plow it, because there's no point, because they're just going to keep coming back anyway, so... I'll probably hit it again later tonight or something. I gotta hit it one more time probably. I probably have to hit the whole thing again. I didn't even bother touching the mailbox. Because trying that you know, where I plow and then trying to turn onto the road to line up to plow the mailbox, I'd be driving in the deep snow. And then he would just be right back to burying it again. I mean like why even fucking bother trying to clean it out twice, you know? So it's just, it's really a frustrating deal and your timing is, you know, is bullshit with the roadplot guys, but you can't help it either. But, I don't know. It's just stupid. If, if I had a snowblower, yeah, I could probably care fucking less about it. I'd wait till the fucking storm was over with and then I'd go blow, but I can't. I have a four-wheeler. Apparently, I already waited too fucking long. Like, well, I'm not going to get out at fucking 6 a.m. to go plow fucking snow. It's just stupid. 
and it's still fucking blowing like a bitch. My trail that I shoveled, coming back here, buried. I don't even know if I'm even gonna bother. It's just like, if if we're just gonna keep getting snowstorms like this, there's no point then because we're just gonna keep, you know, they're just gonna keep getting buried. And what's so fucking stupid is that now they're saying that we're gonna after this mess, we're supposed to get a whole week or so of no snow. And it's supposed to be in the 20s. Well, you know, that's just going to bring more fucking snow. But they claim that it's not supposed to bring anything. Well, apparently we got this bullshit because just a few days ago it was fucking 30 degrees out. So that's why it fucking snowed. That's why now we have this big freaking snow, snowstorm. In and down south, um, they're even getting thunderstorms. Heavy rain, you know. I mean, like, come on, that's just stupid. You know. So you know that something's going on with the weather because. I mean, I mean, it's always kind of happened over the, the years, anyway. But it just seems like every year they're getting a little bit worse. I mean, look at that freaking, that drifting bullshit. Now you probably can't see it all now. Here comes another good gust. I mean, there's just, there's whiteout conditions at times. You just can't see nothing. You know? And, and you know, and look at the freaking, the snow against the shot. That's you know, another good, good blow here. I don't know if it'll show up on camera or not, but. I mean, what do you do with this fucking mess? You know? <clears throat> and I know that my uncle's gonna be busy, you know, blowing all his shit out, so he's not gonna have time to come over here and blow it, so. I mean, what do you do? You're, you're basically stuck to just leaving it, because I'm not going to sit here and argue with it, you know. Break my four-wheeler, you know. I just, I'm not doing that anymore. I already broke it enough over the fucking six years of fucking plowing snow with it, or seven years, however fucking long it's been. So, it's, it's getting... Even just plowing the end of the fucking driveway... I just had to start ramming that, you know, because I couldn't get it any fucking further than that, so. And then, I, I believe Matt just uploaded the video. He was plowing some old snow in his back of his yard. And he was trying to go through a, a snow bank or whatever, you know, with his tractor. He was trying to open that up. and Well, you know, that's how you wreck shit, you know. I've done it. I've done it with Big Red, and all it does is just break shit, so. Um. I know that. I think he. He's, he, he had the mountain taken in or, in or whatever, and he had some welding done to it. Well, if you have to keep abusing it like that, you're just gonna break those fucking welds again. You know? That's how things get wore out, because, you know, you're, you're stressing them out too much. Like, well, sometimes you don't have a choice either. If you don't have the right equipment to do the job, you gotta, you know, you gotta work your, what you have even harder. And this is the bullshit I get on Big Red when trying to do it. I, I break the winch cables, I bend shit, the plow fucking bent because I guess I was trying to plow, I usually plow all this open, I'll come in from the roadway now and I'll try to do it. Well, once the road plow guy comes, this will all be buried so then I won't be able to get back here anymore until I shovel out the fucking drill. But, I was coming in this way. Well, I forgot about that fucking stump that was there. So I hit that doing about freaking 5-10 miles an hour. So now my plow's fucking cock-dyed. Well, it's always kind of been cock-dyed anyway. But I suppose it's from whacking in the air shit. But see, that's what happens if, if you're... Well, I mean, you should know that it's there. I mean, I knew it was there, but I thought I'd get lucky and... I would miss it. Or I would pick up the plow in time. Well, I didn't get to it quick enough and rammed right into it. So that's, I mean, even though you think you may know where stuff is in your yard, there may be something that that could pop up out of nowhere, too. You know? I mean, for fuck's sake, you could hit a, hit a, you know, a dead deer that died in your fucking yard, and he's frozen to the ground, and you whack into that, and you're going to fuck your blade over more than you will that fucking deer. Even though you think the deer would be pretty soft, but the thing is, once they, they die in the cold, then they freeze, so... It's just basically like hitting a snowbank at that point. You know. 
I mean, that's how you fucking bend shit and you twist it and, you know, and it's because of fucking bullshit like this. And I know Matt says he doesn't like the snowball because he's got, he's got the gravel. Well, to be honest with you, you can do it. It's just that you have to keep the shoot down. You know, you can't let it go blow, you know, 20, 30 feet into your yard. Because, you know, yeah, you ain't going to want the rocks in your yard, but... You know, just blow them right over to the fucking neighbor's yard. They ain't going to give a shit. <laughs> so, I mean, I know that... I mean, I've never seen his tractor work in my kind of conditions of snow. Because he hasn't... I don't think he's gotten that kind of weather yet. I don't know. I know he was just talking something about some kind of a snowstorm like that he got, but, um, yeah, we got extreme, extreme, we got, uh, we have at least three to four feet of fucking snow on the ground right now, and it's still fucking blowing, so, I would honestly would love to see how his tractor does against four or five feet of fucking snow, I just, he'll, he'll be like me, he'll be doing more cussing than anything else, because he's just not going to get anywhere. And yeah, his tractor's two-wheel drive and bigger it's four-wheel drive. I'm 70 horsepower. He's probably like 20. You know. So. A tractor's really not going to do, do you much good. You know. I would I would honestly would love to see him come, come and try to fly out my shit. He wouldn't get very far with it because, you know. Because there's just too much here for a tractor. Now, if I had the big old freaking 1586, the 1586 wouldn't even know that I'm moving it. You know, but I don't. If I would have had, if I would have gotten had that loader put on the 1586, then I wouldn't even be using Big Red at fucking all. You know, or I'd probably still be using Big Red. I just wouldn't be using him as much. You know, so it's frustrating. And I can't put a blower on the 1586 because the three-point don't work. I don't have a fucking top link. And three, you know, three-point inch snow blowers are, are expensive. New. Yeah, I use their cheaper, but then they probably got more issues too, so. I don't know. So. I'd like to see how my tarp is doing on the 1586 if it blew off yet. Probably fucking did, I wouldn't doubt it. It's only held on to fucking bailing point. So. But yeah, this is just a clusterfuck. I mean, I don't know when the hell I'm... I mean, the time the road plow guy gets up here to plow all these other roads, my shop will be completely buried. I'm not going to be able to get back here anymore. So, if I do any more videos, they'll have to be done at some point, I guess, in the house, or I just don't do any more videos in for the year. I mean, look at that drift right there. Uh, come on. There we go. Look at that. Probably doesn't look quite that bad on the camera, but that's pretty fucking bad. I can't even hardly see those vehicles. Of course, it's all blowing in the shop, too, because I have the door up, but... There's another... Another good, uh... Another good drift. I mean, you can even see where I watched, this, you know, what? 18 minutes ago, it's already like halfway blown in my footprints. Like, this is just bullshit. It looks like it is kind of lessening up to just a hair bit, but it's when you get those gusts. That's what fucks over your day. There comes a good one right now, boys. I'll see if it does anything. No, I guess not. And good luck getting all those fucking vehicles out. You're gonna have tons of fucking fun moving all that hot sucking snow. <clears throat> so Yeah, I don't know. I think to be honest with you, I think everyone's just better off using a snow blower, even Matt. I just think what you need to do is don't blow the snow um onto your yard. Like where your driveway ends is where you that's where you stack your snow. You know, and it'll make your driveway smaller, but as long as it's big enough to get your vehicles in and out, that's all that fucking matters. So, and I know that the, the, the black family that lives next to the farm, they only shovel out what they need to. They only make a, a path in their driveway big enough to get their vehicles out. That's it. They don't bother doing any more than that. So, 
of course, when at the farm, you know, we'll blow everything out because we have to, because we got cattle. So if the vet needs to get down here or something, you know, we gotta be able, they gotta be able to get to the fucking to the cows or whatever. So, because we had that problem a few years ago too. My uncle got a little bit sloppy and he didn't bother blowing off part of the yard there to get to the barn. And then that cow was trying to give birth to his baby and she was having a hard time pushing it out. She wouldn't even push it out and we had to call the vet and when the vet showed up they couldn't even get through. I was like, it's only going to take you an extra half an hour to blow that out. Blow it out. So now that's what he's doing now. So that's that's what happens when you get sloppy with your work. If you get sloppy, then something fucks up and then, you, then you're in a world of shit even more. If you just keep it fucking clean in the first place, you wouldn't even have to worry about it. But now he's doing that because he, he learned it the fucking hard way after losing a calf and a cow. Even though I don't think it would have mattered if, if, if... I don't think they could have saved the cow anyway even if they did get it to a vet, you know, to the actual vet place. <clears throat> because I think the vet did want, want to take it, but... They couldn't get their trucks in, they couldn't get the trailer in to take it, so... You know, that's, that's sloppy work. Keep your fucking shit open. So... But... Yeah, I don't know. If you guys don't see videos from me for for a while, well, this is why. Because I'm probably still busy trying to fight this bullshit. It's just, it's just beyond. I don't even know what to do if you're by the shop because it's just too much. I may just have to let it go. It's just, it's too much for for Big Red. I'm I'm tired of it. I've had I had problems like this in the, in the past years, and it's just it's more of a fight than it's worth to do. It's not worth getting stressed over about it. You know, you know, fuck it, let it go. Just if you, if like right now I'm back here, so if I need anything, I ought to take it now and take it to the house in case I need it. But I ain't got nothing back here. I don't need my grinder for anything. So I got hammers, I got screwdrivers, and everything up at the house. You know, well, I'm mean, the only thing I probably ever need is the air compressor. But what good is it gonna do? Because I got the hoses on a reel. So <laughs> you know, and if I ever needed the air compressor. I'd have to take it now because if it gets any more buried back here, I'm not gonna be able to get to it. It'd have to get blown open then. But usually, I don't need the air compressor in the winter time. So, and I didn't even check bigger as tire pressure this year. I usually check it. Um, well, usually in fall, I'll blow out bigger as air filter and then I'll t check his tire pressure. But I didn't even do that this this fall. It just it slipped my mind. So. I did the John Deere though, which is funny. Well, the John Deere, because I was using that to chop leaves, so I was basically doing that right onto the bitter end, so. But you know, the John Deere I think gets in more dustier conditions than Big Red does, so. So, yeah. And everyone was was wondering or guessing what I bought. Uh, you guys seen that, and I was flying that, that thingy, and yes, it is a drone. Um, if, I can't pronounce the name. I'll you guys. Well, I was going to make a video on it one of these days, but now I'm back to fighting snow again, so I don't know when I'll make a video on it. But it is a drone. It's not. My sister bought me that. I think she paid like fifty or sixty bucks or something for it. So it's not. It's not a real high end drone, but. A lot of people were apparently were leaving comments and saying that this drone is a perfect drone. For people that want to just get into the, that are just starting to get into the hobby of flying things, so it's a good starter, little, little guy. I know that one guy said it, it doesn't do very good for videotaping. Well, it looked crappy on that video because the lens was dirty. I, because I kept fucking ramming into the snow banks. <laughs> you know, I, I had like very little flying experience. I flew it a little bit that, that night when I got it in the house. So flew it a little bit, but the the only thing that sucks about this this drone though is that with all apparently with all the little extra bit of weight on it that's on there, you possibly get maybe about they say about six and a half minutes of flight time. I think I get a little bit more than that, but apparently if you take all the weight off even the camera, you'll get even more flight time. So, but. The problem I'm having with it is that it doesn't want to 
like it'll record video, obviously, but then a lot of them won't play. It's just that they're either corrupted or just not wanting to play, so. But I don't know what's up with that, so. The footage that you guys did see was just happened to be lucky footage that actually was playable. The rest of it wouldn't even play, so. And then I had it flying out um, a couple days ago, right before the, the snowstorm. Um, bad idea. Um, because the wind took it away. Couldn't save it. And then it ended up flying down west a little bit, like on the end of my property. And I didn't know where the hell it was going, so I had no choice but to just to shut it down and let it hit the, hit, well, luckily it hit the snow, it didn't hit the, the, you know, the road, so. But I guess it landed up right. So I was walking in the back area, I was like, where the hell is it? I was trying to fucking find it, because I didn't see where the hell it landed. So I started walking around there, because I knew kind of where it was going to land, but I didn't know exactly where, so. I like, well, maybe I'll get lucky if I flick the throttle back on. Okay, well, I started to hit the throttle, and it takes off like a bat out of hell, goes back up to the air, go crashes into the freaking neighbor's yard, you know, the ex-mayor's yard, hit, hit his freaking snowbank. It's like, oh, good God, now i got to walk all the way fucking down the road to go back to get it. Like, son of a bitch. Like, I was trying to save it, too, like I wanted to save it, you know, try to fly it back home. Well, it just kept getting further away from me, too, and the wind kept taking it, so I was like, well, crash the fucking thing, and I'll walk and get it. So I froze my tits off going back to the house and getting it. So, and then the first time when I, because that, that was actually the second time when I flew it outside. The first time I flew it, I didn't, know what the, I didn't really have a clue what the fuck I was doing. So it ended up flying up really high. I wish the drone was flying or the, the, the camera was recording because it would have been some damn good video. It flew over the house. It... Flew over these cars, it hit the power line. Thank God it didn't blow up. Then I was I was able to save it from the power lines. It drifted back over there, crashed into that guy's fucking tree in his yard. It landed in the fucking tree. I was like, oh great, it's stuck in the tree. How am I gonna get it down? Well, I took the freaking throttle back on. It took off and it just happened to hit a branch and I was able to. Then I shut it down and then it just started falling on its own. So and that was a fucking cluster fuck from hell. <laughs> Note, you want to learn how to fly drones? Start indoors first. Because <laughs> at least then they can't get away from you. <clears throat> so, and this drone here does not like wind at all. Very little. I mean, it has to be basically a calm day. The slightest breeze will just take the bitch right away. So the, the thing ended up getting away from me twice. Um, it's, I'm not used to the controls because... It's kind of like when you, because the red lights, because there's a red and green lights on this thing. The red means it's the front, and the green means it's it's the rear. Well, since I'm not used to it, I kind of ended up in front of the the drone. So then when I went to to go turn it, you know, say to left, well, it was kind of like the opposite, and it ended up going right. You know, it it was kind of the opposite. You, to really learn how to fly these things, you're better off just staying behind them. And then learning how to fly it that way, and then start learning how to fly it when it's in different directions. And this drone apparently can do flips and whatever, it can do some stunts, you know. Which, well, I'm not going to even try to do that. I need to get a hang of even learning how to fly this fucking thing. Another thing you probably should do <clears throat> is fly the goddamn thing out in, a, in an open field, because... You know, it wouldn't be so bad here, but now since they got their cars here, I don't want to damage a car, so... I mean, even though, I don't think a drone would hurt it, because the drone's made out of fucking plastic. Um, I mean, now they're covered in snow, so the snow would probably just break the fall, but... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to fly it too much outside anymore. I think I'm going to fly it mostly indoors now, for the winter time anyway. Once summer hits, I'll take it out to the... To the big field there and I'm going to fly it out there but I already broke one thing on the fucking drone uh, it has those it has the, the the guards for the little for the little blades and I had already kind of cracked it I guess whatever I hit I it cracked it but it was still on there 
So I guess whenever it crashed out west, it must have landed on that side and it completely just sheared that freaking guard right off. Well, the guards are just made out of freaking plastic, so naturally they're, they're going to break. But they're also supposed to act kind of like a like a shock absorber too. They're supposed to kind of take some of the blow and then kind of just bounce the thing back out instead of going just right into it and freaking grenading. So, but it's a, it's a good little drone. Um, apparently, you're you're supposed to update these things. I guess apparently these older. I think this is this is an older model because the ones I'm seeing on YouTube are new are newer, from what I can tell. And apparently these older ones had a lot more wobble in them. They weren't, they never liked to really hover. They just liked to, you know, they just took right off. You know, even when you're not controlling them, they would just take off. Apparently now with the newer ones, they don't do that as that as bad. So apparently there's, you're supposed to update the, the, the chip that's in them. Well, this one's not going to get updated, so, but... I do need to order some, some new guards, though. They say that it would fly better without it. They would. They said it would actually be more stable with, without the camera, the landing skids, and then the the guards. Well, I keep all that on there for a certain reason, you know, because if I ram the son of a bitch into a wall or something, then there goes all my freaking impellers. Even though I think if the impellers were to hit the wall or something, um, the motor they would just stop. They wouldn't shatter because I've. I've kind of had my fingers in there, and it kind of actually hit the throttle a couple of times, and it hit my finger, but it never sheared them off, it never cut my finger, it just instantly stopped, so, I guess there must be some kind of a slippage thingy in there, it just lets it slip then, instead of breaking, so, maybe you can't break them as bad then, I don't know, but, it's a, it's, it's a good little, it's a good starter tool, that's for sure, I don't, I wouldn't want to go up to the big drones, you know, like the the big ones, I forget what the hell they're called now, but they're, still, they're like fifteen hundred dollars, you know, and up. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to buy some two thousand dollar drone. And the first thing I do is wreck the son of a bitch. You know, I mean they're expensive. And if if you guys watch uh, how farms work, their channel, he he already wrecked his. Um, he's had his for about a good year and a half, and he already wrecked it. And, uh, I think the battery popped out, and he had no control over it, and nose died right into the ground. Bent the uh, bent the one arm that holds the motor, and whatever. So, and the case was all busted and everything too. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to wreck a you know a two thousand dollar drone one day and owning it, you know. That would not be good. So I would either try to rebuild it and keep it going or just keep buying new ones, I guess. But most of those parts on that drone are replaceable. Like the guards, you can order new ones. And impellers, you can order new ones. You can order new batteries and memory chips for them or whatever. You know, you can basically rebuild them if you have to. So, yeah. So I'm just going to stick the flying her indoors for a little while and get more used to it and and when it's not so windy out I'll take it outside and fly it but yeah if you, if you were to take it out today it wouldn't even get off the driveway and it, and it would just disappear you would, you would never find it again so the only way you would ever find it is you'd have to wait the spring <laughs> Well, by then, it would be completely wrecked, because the, the snow would melt on it and ruin the motors and everything, so... Wouldn't be a good time. And I don't feel like wrecking a new drone that I just got, you know, so... But yeah, it doesn't do very good videotaping. I mean, well, I suppose it does a little bit better than what you guys have seen there, it's just because the lens was dirty. But... It's not meant for actual videotaping of like a tractor mowing hay or something it's not meant for that it's meant for you just to fly it around do your stunts videotape it and that's it and it's so you can learn how to fly i've never flown anything uh, that's my first thing actually that's my actual very first drone and they actually make some 
some really tiny drones too, which are kind of useless because, yeah, they would, even in a half a mile an hour wind gust, they'd be gone. So, but you know what, the big, the big two thousand dollar drones, they have built-in GPS. They can fly on their own. You can tell them what route to take. Like you can, like I can use, I can hook my phone up to it, use my phone as a screen to see what, what I'm videotaping and where I'm flying it. And I can tell it how high to go, how low to go, what to do. You, know, you can tell it all those things. With, with, with my kind of drone, you can't. It's basically just a starter drone. So you can just, you know, learn how to fly it. And then if you think you're ready to upgrade to something a little bit bigger, then you can do that. So I'll probably fly this for a little while. And then... I guess if I think I'm ready for something bigger, then maybe I'll invest in something bigger later on. Something a little bit bigger. You know, maybe something that's around $200 or something. You know, something a little bit more beefier. And so. But yeah, so that's what's going on here. Um, big old snow blizzard. And, uh. I can still hear the snowplow guys out. So I know they're still up plowing around. So. But yeah, that's what's going on. That and the drone that I already kind of wrecked a little bit. And lucky it was just a guard, so. And it, like I said, this comes with, with uh, replaceable impellers, too, or blades, whatever the hell you want to call them, so. But. I'm going to have to go online and try to see if I can order some more of those uh, guards for it. They said, like I said, it would fly better without them, but I like them on there since I'm a, you know, I'm a freaking beginner, so. Kind of have to learn stuff a little bit, so. But surprisingly, I was, I was doing better though the second day in. Like, I had very little flying time, and I was already doing a little bit better. So. And then that third day, like I said, I was going to try to take it out and fly it. Well, that was before the snowstorm. I lost it, so. Had to go re had to go find it. But it was windy out, too, so it was, that was a bad idea. I should have just flew the fucking thing in the house. So that's probably what I'll do probably later tonight or tomorrow or something too. I'll have this flight and then I'll, at least then I can keep an eye on it. You know, and get used to it a little bit more. But yeah, at some point I'll probably do a, do a video of it. Um, one guy was actually dead on on what it was. So he already knows what it is. Um, so. But yeah. But it, it, it's a good little drone, though. It's not too bad. Um, see, another thing, too, with those bigger drones, you can actually can control the camera angle. On this drone, you can't do that. It's fixed, so... But it does record sound, though, the drone. My old... My, the, the drone the, the drone that I have now, it does record noise or audio. It's just I don't think you'd ever hear anyone talking because you'd be hearing the engines, so it's kind of useless for noise. So that's why in the video I just put music over it because all you would hear anyway is the drone and the sound of hitting snow and the sound of me cussing at it. So, <laughs> you know, you can't get too mad at the drone because it's not the drone's fault, but it just sucks when you lose control of it and you're trying to save it and you can't. So it's like either crash the fucking thing and wreck it or shut the throttle down and hope it hits the snow bank and doesn't wreck that way. So what are you going to do? So anyway guys, I'm going to take off So I'm because I'm done out here. And the snowplow guy sounds like he's coming back to mess up my fucking driveway some more. So, but anyways, guys, I'm gonna take off. So I guess have a good day and stuff and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.